Hello, everyone. Welcome to our weekly winery update. I'm your host, Amanda, and thank you so much for joining me tonight. If you are watching this and sipping on something delicious, let me know in the comments section what you're drinking tonight. I am drinking some Marquette Rosé. Apparently, this wine is kind of like a bag of potato chips. You know, you open up a bag and you can't stop uh, eating all the chips. If I open up a case of Marquette Rosé, then I, I just can't stop drinking it. So it's just like the perfect spring, summer wine, I think. <laughs> I mean, it's good year round, but... <laughs> So I am sipping on some very delicious Marquette Rosé. I have a lot of exciting things to talk about tonight. We have had a crazy week and it's going to get even crazier. I can't believe next week it is already going to be July and I'm not ready for July yet. I feel like it should still be May maybe. I don't know. It's been going way too fast. It's officially summer now and uh, I'm now we're getting a whole bunch of rain. I think uh, Mother Nature got uh, spring and summer mixed up here a little bit. We had like 90 plus degree, no rain days here. And then now that it's summer, it's just going to be raining a bunch here in Wisconsin. So I think Mother Nature maybe had a little too much wine and is a little confused right now. But we're not going to let it ruin our summer fun here. And like I said, I've got a lot to dig into for this week and stuff we've got coming up here too. So <laughs> let's see what to talk about first. I guess the first thing I'm really excited about, we hinted at this the other day. We're doing a Christmas in July special. So I know a couple of people had some really good guesses on what the Christmas in July special was going to be. And drum roll, please. <laughs> we are bringing back our 12 days of Christmas boxes, and we are going to be selling them as a Christmas in July special. So as you can see in this photo, Coronacation is in the box. It's labeled as a different name and flavor, but there are a ton of favorites, wines that were sold out of, wines that are only in that box. And so we're bringing it back for a little Christmas in July fun. And since it's July and not Christmas time, we're doing a like super awesome discount. We're doing 15% off for everybody, and then herd members get 25% off. So the boxes are going to be discounted, and you can save up your box and bring it back during Christmas time and get a discount on your Christmas box too. So those are going to be coming out July 1st. We'll be launching the Christmas in July, and it, we're not doing pre sales or you know, pre orders or anything online. It is first come, first serve. So just go and come on in July 1st, even. I don't know. We don't, we didn't make a ton of them. So it's like I said, first come, first serve. So if you want to come enjoy some delicious wines like the uh, Corona Cation here, then come in earlier than later. So that is going to be our Christmas in July special. And I feel like we'll we'll find some other fun things to tie into it and make it like a truly fun thing. I feel like I need to find a Santa hat that is like tropical, like a Santa hat that has palm trees on it. I don't know. We, we've got to have some fun with this. So Christmas in July is happening next week already. <laughs> this week, we've got quite a bit going on too. So we tomorrow have our teacher happy hour from one to four. That's going to be going on. And it's $1 off like bottles of wine, glasses of wine, food. Just show your teacher ID. And somebody asked uh, if a uh, homeschool teacher counts. I, I feel like that should. If you had to stay home and teach your kids for an extended period of time, 
I, I feel like you are essentially a teacher now too, but definitely the teachers that have put up with this last year and a half of virtual learning and in-person and doing all of it, come on in, enjoy a happy hour. It's a dollar off of bottles, glasses, and food. It's going to be a good time. Just come on in and <laughs> complain and be just embrace that it's finally summer and Hopefully you're not too busy with summer school or anything and going to be able to just enjoy some summer plans. So we've got that going on tomorrow, some other fun events and things happening too. But before I get into that, I kind of, I'm just too excited. I want to share my other big announcement. So you guys ready for this? I, sometimes I get some crazy ideas in my head and <laughs> It's like, well, I don't know, maybe someday we'll be able to do this. But this idea, I got it in my head and I just couldn't get it out of my head. I had to make it happen. And so we are going to be creating the Timber Hill Blind. <laughs> We've got the trailer and we are going to be working with a couple different people to get it fixed up and turned into a little mobile bar camper. So I thought, you know, with our hunting theme and everything, the blind name, you know, when you go hunting, you kind of sit in a blind with a window. And so this is the Timber Hill blind. <laughs> it only instead of hunting out of it, you can come hunting for wine out of it. <laughs> uh, we are, we have a couple of events coming up here this summer. And so I'm on a crazy timeline here. It's probably not going to happen if I'm realistic, but we've got some events coming up here in July and August that I would love to have this at, but I just wish I was um, one of like Cinderella's fairy godmothers and I could just wave my wand and turn this horse trailer into what you see here <laughs> and turn the pumpkin into the perfect carriage, but <laughs> so it is going to be coming soon though. We've got this horse trailer, horse box trailer that we have already removed the middle out of it. That was like, took 30 seconds <laughs> and then we're cleaning it up. We're painting it. We're cutting out the window hole. And then my amazing father and all his uh, awesome woodworking skills, he's going to help me put together the different like wood paneling and everything. And then that little door that you see kind of in the white area, that actually opens up into a storage area where we're going to be storing a bunch of kegs of wine. So it's a big project, but I cannot wait until it's done. I want to get like some like of the dome furniture and stuff out and like put that outside of the trailer and just make it like a cool VIP area. So stay tuned. I will keep sharing videos and photos of the process, but the Timber Hill Blind will be coming your way shortly. And the, the laws on this kind of stuff are tricky. So it's, we have to pretty much go to places that have liquor licenses. Nonprofits can apply for uh, up to two wine licenses a year. So different nonprofits, if they want us to come to their events, that'd be an option. But otherwise, we can't just like show up to the farmer's market and do fun things like that, at least not right now. The, the laws prohibit us from being able to do fun stuff like that. So maybe uh, in the near future, we can get that law changed so we can go to the farmer's market and do all kinds of fun things with the blind. So stay tuned. Otherwise, you know, the fairgrounds will be there for the Rock the Grounds event. Hopefully with this, I I don't know, it's going to be a little, little crazy timeline, but stay tuned. I will uh, keep you all updated on what's happening with the Timber Hill Blind and... <laughs> I'm so excited. I, I feel like I need to find a way to like be able to fit a, a blow up bed in there and just turn it into a little camp or two, maybe. I don't know. It's gonna <laughs> it's gonna be really fun. So that's one big project I'm working on. 
We've got a couple other things happening at the winery. Like I said, it's a busy week. So we've got the teacher event tomorrow. Then we also have book club. Tomorrow we are discussing Waiting for the Night Song. And this is by Julie Carrick Dalton. It's a movie novel about friendships forged into childhood magic and ruptured by the high price of secrets that leave you forever changed. <laughs> so if you haven't checked out Book Club yet, this is what we're going to be discussing tomorrow. But we pick a book every month. Everyone's welcome to join. You can always just join in the theory, too, and read the book. And if you can't make it out for Book Club, hopefully you can join us one of these days. So we've got that going on tomorrow night. Friday nights, we are back at it with a 90s trivia. Uh, we had a crazy turnout on the 11th, and this is going to be part two happening this Friday, the 25th. If you weren't there on the 11th, don't worry. It's still um, team spots and everything are going to be first come, first serve. And I know the winners last time, I'm I am guessing they are going to be coming back. And the 90s trivia, even if you were born in the 90s, grew up in the 90s, it's still some hard questions. So I will say there's going to be an audio round this time that I am really excited for because we're going to get to jam out to some good old 90s music. So 90s trivia is going to be happening Friday at 6 p.m. So make sure to stop on out. And we are no longer doing reservations. So with trivia night and everything, um, it's tables are first come first serve. So if you want to come out, we recommend getting there early. Or if you have a group, maybe somebody gets off work earlier than the rest of the crew and they can come and reserve your table. But we've got no reservations happening anymore. We're kind of trying to get back to just the the normal swing of things. So we've got trivia on Friday. Saturday is just going to be kind of a regular day, I'm pretty sure, at the winery. Hopefully just lots of people coming in and trying some wine and having a good time. Then on Sunday, we have like three things going on. So <laughs> Sunday is going to be really crazy. We have the camp theme board painting class from 11 to 1 and then we have our timber hill barbecue happening on sunday from noon to four so these are going to be meals there's either barbecue pork or barbecue chicken uh, chips coleslaw cookie also and the barbecue is going to be on a pretzel bun oh it's so good the coleslaw that we're going to make has like peppers in it. So I, I, I've grown to love coleslaw, but originally I did not love it by any means, but this coleslaw with the peppers and everything, oh, it's really good. So we've got the Timber Hill barbecue happening on Sunday from noon to four, and that will help kick off the other fun events of the day, which would be the guys from Gary the Band are coming out. If you haven't seen Gary the Band, you definitely have to come. They are so talented and they always bring such a good group with them too. People get to having a good time and start dancing and singing along. So Gary Band does typically bring a really big crowd and fingers crossed we're going to have good weather and be able to be outside for it. So I would recommend bringing a bag chair just in case the patio chairs and everywhere fills up. We have added more picnic tables though. So we've got six picnic tables now. So there is a little bit more seating in our patio area, but if you want, always feel free to bring your bag chairs because uh, you're more than welcome to post up with those. <laughs> So Gary the Band's going to be coming on Sunday from 2 to 4. And then, oh man, let's, let's check in with Allie and see what she's got cooking this week because I got to try a sample of it and you're going to want to hear this recipe. Welcome back to 
Decor Decisions. Today we're going to use Timber Hills Throwback Thursday to make a Badger Blitz. First things first, well yes I got a haircut, thank you for noticing. But also, we got new merch, we just got these crew necks in, I think Friday. We are obviously selling them, hello, they're so comfy, they're good for sitting by a fire. I know it's not sweatshirt season. But sitting by a fire at night with a little breeze in the air, put on your crew neck, rep Timber Hill, hello. How fun! So yes, we just got these in and we're selling them for $30 each. Now let's get to the cocktail. The Badger Blitz. You might be thinking, Allie, you look like a girl who loves sports. Do I? <laughs> we're calling it the Badger Blitz because while I haven't made it yet, I just feel like it's probably going to be red, so. <laughs> We're going to start with a five ounce pour of Throwback Thursday. Oh, jeez. Oh my god. <laughs> After that, we are going to take a raspberry liqueur. I'm going to do a half ounce of this. I'm also gonna throw in about a half ounce of lemon juice. After that, I'm gonna put some ice in there. Why do I drop it every episode? Jeez Louise. And then I'm gonna top it off with some ginger beer. Ah uh, yes, as my dad would say, badger red. <laughs> Give it a good little mix. Let's try it. I'm nervous. I just came up with this on the top of my head and I don't know if it's gonna work, so let's see. Actually not as sweet as you would think. The ginger beer and the lemon really cut the sweetness of the throwback. It still is sweet, but not as sweet as you would think. So cheers, I guess cheers to the Badgers. Do they have a game today? I, I usually show my parents every one of these videos. I'm not gonna show my dad this one because he's gonna be like, who did I raise? You don't know when the Badgers are playing. Sorry, sir, I got a lot of other stuff to do. That seemed like an extra comical episode of Poor Decisions. And I, I feel like we need a blooper reel for some of these because I don't know about you guys, but I kind of want to see what got cut out there of her trying to open that bottle of liqueur. There was, there was like a jump there where it, she was trying to open it and then it was open. So I think we need a blooper reel here on our Poor Decisions episodes. Uh, just based on some of the stuff that comes out of Allie's mouth, I feel like a blooper reel could have some really good content. <laughs> oh man, that drink was really good though. The Badger Blitz, that's a fun name. You know, you're in Wisconsin, you can't go wrong with throwing badger in the name of anything, right? And the I like throwback Thursday is definitely on the sweeter side for me. You know, I like my, my dry and tart and uh, with the ginger beer and the lemon juice and everything, it like had like a nice little like tart, uh, I don't know, flavor to it. It was, it was very good. So kudos to Allie for thinking of a brand new recipe. <laughs> so Let's see what else we have going on because there is a lot. I do want to remind everybody that we are going to be closed on the 4th of July. We are going to be at Schilberg Park in Milton. So they always have a fun event there on uh, the 4th of July. I think the 3rd and the 4th they're going to have stuff this year. So they are going to have our wine pouches there and fireworks and music and it's going to be a great time. So we are not going to be open at the winery. We are either going to be there or just drinking wine and grilling out. <laughs> we will not be at the winery on the 4th. So make sure to come out on the 3rd and pick up your wine and everything. 
which so right now the wine of the month is the summer collection which is pineapple watermelon lemon and strawberry those are available through june for herd members but then starting july 1st those will be available to everyone too so you can come on out and get one of each of the summer collection bottles for uh, your 4th of July celebrations. And then for July, I have a bottle of last year's batch. The wine of the month for July is going to be Edelweiss, which is a semi-sweet, kind of sweeter white. So if you like Widow's Weekend or Saval Blanc, this is kind of in that range. Uh, ex always extremely popular. I think this one's probably going to go really fast too. I know there's a lot of people who have been waiting for Edelweiss to come back. So Edelweiss will be the July wine of the month, but we've got some other fun wines and new things coming out here too. And I thought for Tank Talk, we would switch it up and just give you a little bit of behind the scenes video and footage here of what's happening in the tanks. So let's crack into that. All right. So this right here is one of our tanks and it has wine juice in it. And the stuff that you see in the middle there is actually clarifier. So the center of the tank, what you're looking at is the wine tank and then the wine is almost empty from it. And so what you see at the bottom there is clarifier that has been working its magic in the tank. And you can see the hose that's there in the bottom of the screen is actually pulling the wine from that tank into a new tank and it's putting it through the filter. And <laughs> I feel like this photo just doesn't do it justice, but the clarifier then made the wine nice and clear. And so we have been working like crazy, filtering the wine and getting a ton of stuff ready to bottle. Uh, shout out to Julie. She has been a huge help uh, with working in the back in the winery and uh, helping me make a bunch of different wines. So we've got, um, on, we're going to be bottling on Friday. We've got raspberry, black diamond, uh, crazy crayon cord, and cranberry. We are going to be bottling four different wines on Friday. Uh, those four, I think we're sold out of all four of those for sure. Cranberry, we've been sold out for a while. Raspberry, Black Diamond, and yeah, the Crazy Cran Cord. If we aren't sold out, we might be after today. <laughs> so we've got a whole bunch of bottling that we're going to be doing on Friday. And then next week, I'm going to be taking the Sunday Fun Day tank down to Peru, Illinois, that's who bottles the sparkling wine for us down there. And so they will be taking the wine and bottling it into the champagne bottles. And that's something we used to do in-house and it was like extremely labor intensive. It took us forever to get the wine bottled. And so now it's really convenient. We just take the tank down to their winery and they bottle Sunday fun day for us. And then um, we're also going to be working with them on uh, getting some other sparkling wines. So we're going to be getting almond back in stock then too, since that's really similar to Sunday funding. It's basically Sunday with some almond extract in it. But then we are also going to be getting a pink Catawba sparkling wine. So if you don't know, pink Catawba is what we use in Tuesday Booze Day Blush. And we were hoping to call it Bubbly Booze Day, but I don't know what's going on with the government. I'm going to have to give them a call 
because they're trying to say that we can't put booze day on our label, but we already have <laughs> Tuesday booze day in the wine and bottles and pouches and they approve those labels. So they're kind of contradicting themselves right now. So either way, we're going to call it bubbly booze day. And if the, if they make us change the name of it, then that can all be our secret code word for it. We, we might just have to call it, um, who knows? I, I was just planning on calling it bubbly booze day since that's what it is. It's bubble. Maybe we need to call it bubbly Tuesday. I don't know. <laughs> But, oh, Aubrey asked Illinois Sparkling Company. Yes, they are the ones who bottle our sparkling wines for us. So they are awesome to work with. We just take the tank down there and pick up the wine and magic presto. <laughs> it's bottled into sparkling bottles and everything. So hopefully we can either get the government to accept bubbly booze day. Otherwise, Bubbly Tuesday, I guess, still has a good ring to it. <laughs> uh, so we'll have that coming soon. Oh, man, we've got some other new wines and things we're working on. But right now, my main focus is just getting those other ones that we talked about bottled, like the raspberry and cranberry, and then the Edelweiss. Uh, we've got just a lot of wines that have been out of stock for a while that'll hopefully be back soon, like Traminette, Saval, the Mead. I don't know if Christy's watching, but the Mead is in the home stretch here. <laughs> so we're working on a few new wines, but then just getting caught back up on all the oldies but goodies. So those will be coming back at you soon. I know I'm excited for Cranberry to come back because it's sweet and tart and I love like the cranberry mule and cranberry spritzers. Like it's just a, a nice wine to like mix and do fun things with. Like just like how you, when you go to a bar, you can get a cranberry vodka or I recently tried a cranberry gin. I think I'll stick to the uh, cranberry wine spritzers and that kind of stuff instead. <laughs> Oh, Laura says pink bubbly. I like that one. Alyssa likes bubbly Tuesday. Yeah, we've got, hopefully we can stick to our original name, but otherwise, you know us, we'll, we'll uh, figure it out and come up with another even more fun name. So we'll see. <laughs> but we've, I'm really excited for it. I love sparkling wine. Uh, so any new sparkling wine is I'm sure going to be a hit. So maybe that'll have to be the August wine of the month, or I might be too impatient to wait. We'll see. <laughs> Let's see. I've got slushy flavors I still need to tell you guys about. So wine slushies this week are old fashioned and peach. So the old fashioned one was extremely popular the last time we did it. And we ran out of some of the old fashioned mix in that. So if this is one that you want to try, I highly recommend coming in and getting it. We do now have the 32 ounce to go ones, and that is more than a bottle of wine. So a regular bottle of wine is 25 ounces. So 32 ounces, you're getting a slushy that's bigger than a bottle of wine. So that's a steal, $14. And then we've got the 16 ounce to go ones too, and the ones at the winery are for 16 ounces as well. But we are working on, I don't know when they're gonna be coming in, hopefully sooner than later, we have a new souvenir slushy cup that should be coming very shortly. It's gonna be kind of the in-between of those and it's got our logo and a lid and a straw and so you'll be able to buy a souvenir slushy cup and get it filled with whatever slushy flavor of the day and then when you bring it back, you'll get a discount on the refills. So we're excited to get those in stock as soon as they come in and launch our souvenir slushy cup option. We're hoping it's a big hit and we might bring those with us to Chili Mania then. All right. Ooh, 
Good question. Is there mango in the peach? Nope. I think she's just doing peach. So Mel has become our slushy master. And uh, I, I know I saw some peach juice around. So I'm pretty sure it is just like a peach, like almost like a Bellini. I think Bellinis are the ones where they take a uh, sparkling wine and add peach juice to it instead of orange juice. Um, so there will not be any uh, mango in that one. Oh, people are pretty excited about the souvenir slushy cups. I, I'm probably gonna like they're 24 ounce cups, so they are also gonna be big. They <laughs> could hold almost a whole bottle of wine. Like why? Why did they sell for 24? We couldn't have pushed it to 25. Otherwise, so now you just have to. Pour your whole bottle of wine in there, except for that last little shot, and then just, you know, finish off the bottle. <laughs> and then you could walk around with the slushy souvenir. You can just walk around and drink a bottle of wine out of it, too. Or fill it with ice and split it between two people with some sangria or margarita. That sounds good. <laughs> I, they, I think they'll be good water cups too for during the day, like for work. If you want to represent Timber Hill, it'll just be like a good water jug to carry around too. So they, they're just, they're super multi-use. They're going to be really handy. So I cannot wait. You know me, I love all my Timber Hill swag here. So I have a bunch of uh, giant mason cup jars with lids and straws are going to be fun. <laughs> And Allie showed you guys the new sweaters. We've got tank tops coming in in like the next few days here. We'll make sure to post on Facebook. Uh, the tank tops are gonna be maroon and that like teal color that we have in some of the t-shirts and long sleeves. And they've got some fun sayings on the tank tops too. We've got uh, Sip Happens and I make poor decisions at Timber Hill Winery. I think I'm definitely going to need one of each, <laughs> but the tank tops are, they should be ready any day now. So like I said, we'll post those on there and I'm really excited. Hopefully we can continue to have some of that hot weather so we can rock our tank tops. And if you are a herd member, we're going to be doing a tie dyeing event here very soon. We ordered a whole bunch of white Timber Hill t-shirts that say herd member on the back. And then we're going to be doing an event where everybody can come and tie dye their herd member t-shirts. So really excited about that one. I'm going to need like five of those. Tie dye is so hot right now. And I can't remember. I think the last time I did tie dye was college, which I graduated from college 10 years ago. So that would probably have been like at least 12 years ago that I last tie-dyed. So I'm excited. I'm definitely going to be partaking in the, the herd t-shirt tie-dyeing event. That's going to be a good time. And hopefully we can get some good weather and do that outside as well. And really spread out and keep, keep the tie-dye outside. <laughs> oh, Heidi loves tie-dye. Yeah, I, I think those are going to be a big hit. So stay tuned for the tickets and details on the herd tie-dyeing. And Gus, I think that's it for tonight. I'm gonna lose my voice again, <laughs> hopefully not, but I hope to see you all at the winery soon. If anybody wants to come help with that, uh, well, help with bottling, of course, that's always an option, send us a message. Or if you are up for the job and wanna come help out with our new uh, mobile bar, the Timber Hill Blind, and if you're good at painting or anything like that, hit me up and we can make it a whole little uh, community project here because it's going to need some work turning a horse trailer into a winery bar. So <laughs> that's, you know, I'm going to be busy. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me tonight and I hope you all have a great week ahead. Cheers. Thank you.